Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another day of daily Bible reading with the Words of Life channel. Uh, my name is Adam Kitt, and today's reading is Isaiah 34, 35, and 36. Let's dive right in. The book of Isaiah, chapter 34. Draw near, O nations, to hear, and give attention, O peoples. Let the earth hear, and all that fills it, the world, and all that comes from it, for the Lord is enraged against all the nations, and furious against all their host. He has devoted them to destruction, has given them over for slaughter. Their slain shall be cast out, and the stench of their corpses shall rise. The mountains shall flow with their blood. All the host of heaven shall rot away, and the skies roll up like a scroll. All their hosts shall fall as leaves fall from the vine, like leaves falling from the fig tree. For my sword has drunk its fill in the heavens. Behold, it ascends for judgment upon Edom, upon the people I have devoted to destruction. The Lord has a sword. It is sated with blood. It is gorged with fat, with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of kidneys of rams. For the Lord has a sacrifice in Bozrah, a great slaughter in the land of Edom. Wild oxen shall fall with them, and young steers with the mighty bulls. Their land shall drink its fill of blood, and their soil shall be gorged with fat. For the Lord has a day of vengeance, a year of recompense for the cause of Zion. And the streams of Edom shall be turned into pitch, and her soil into sulfur. Her land shall become burning pitch. Night and day it shall not be quenched. Its smoke shall go up forever. From generation to generation it shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. But the hawk and the porcupine shall possess it, the owl and the raven shall dwell in it. He shall stretch the line of confusion over it and the plumb line of emptiness. Its nobles, there is no one there to call it a kingdom, and all its princes shall be nothing. Thorns shall grow over its strongholds, nettles and thistles in its fortresses. It shall be the haunt of jackals and abode for ostriches. And wild animals shall meet with hyenas. The wild goat shall cry to his fellow. Indeed, there the night bird settles and finds for herself a resting place. There the owl nests and lays and hatches and gathers her young in her shadow. Indeed, there the hawks are gathered, each one with her mate. Seek and read from the book of the Lord. Not one of these shall be missing. None shall be without her mate. For the mouth of the Lord has commanded, and his spirit has gathered them. He has cast the lot for them. His hand has portioned it out to them with the line. They shall possess it forever. From generation to generation they shall dwell in it. Isaiah chapter 35 The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy in singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the master of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who have an anxious heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For waters break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. In the haunt of jackals, where they lie down, the grass shall become reeds and rushes. And a highway shall be there, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. It shall belong to those who walk on the way. Even if they are fools, they shall not go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come up on it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain gladness and joy and sorrow, and sighing shall flee away. Isaiah chapter 36. In the fourteenth year of King Hezekiah, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came up against all the fortified cities of Judah and took them. 
And the king of Assyria sent the Rabshakeh from Lachish to King Hezekiah at Jerusalem with a great army. And he stood by the conduit of the upper pool on the highway to the washer's field. And there came out to him Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, who was over the household, and Shebna, the secretary, and Joah, the son of Asaph, the recorder. And the Rabshakeh said to them, Say to Hezekiah, Thus says the great king, the king of Assyria, On what do you rest this trust of yours? Do you think that mere words are strategy and power for war? And whom do you now trust that you have rebelled against me? Behold, you are trusting in Egypt, that broken reef of a staff, which will pierce the hand of any man who leans on it, such as Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to all who trust in him. But if you say to me, We trust in the Lord our God, is it not he whose high places and altars Hezekiah has removed, saying to Judah and to Jerusalem, You shall worship before this altar? Come now, make a wager with my master, the king of Assyria. I will give you two thousand horses if you are able on your part to set the riders on them. How then can you repulse a single captain among the least of my master's servants when you trust in Egypt for chariots and for horsemen? Moreover, is it without the Lord that I have come up against this land to destroy it? The Lord said to me, Go up against this land and destroy it. Then Eliakim, Shebna, and Joah said to Rabshakeh, Please speak to your servants in Aramaic, for we understand it. Do not speak to us in the language of Judah within the hearing of the people who are on the wall. But the Rabshakeh said, Has my master sent me to speak these words to your master and to you, and not to the men sitting on the wall who are doomed with you to eat their own dung and drink their own urine? Then the Rabshakeh stood and called out in a loud voice in the language of Judah, Hear the words of the great king, the king of Assyria. Thus says the king, Do not let Hezekiah deceive you, for he will not be able to deliver you. Do not let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord by saying, The Lord will surely deliver us. This city will not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Do not listen to Hezekiah, for thus says the king of Assyria, Make your peace with me and come out to me. Then each one of you will eat of his own vine, and each one of you his own fig tree, and each one of you will drink the water of his own cistern, until I come and take you away to a land like your own land, a land of grain and wine, a land of bread and vineyards. Beware, lest Hezekiah mislead you by saying, The Lord will deliver us. Has any of the gods of the nations delivered his land out of the hand of the king of Assyria? Where are the gods of Hamath and Arpad? Where are the gods of Sepharvaim? Have they delivered Samaria out of my hand? Who among all the gods of these lands have delivered their lands out of my hand, that the Lord should deliver Jerusalem out of my hand? But they were silent and answered him not a word, for the king's command was, Do not answer him. Then Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, who was over the household, and Shebna, the secretary, and Joah, the son of Asaph, the recorder, came to Hezekiah with their clothes torn and told him the words of Rab Shaka. All right, that concludes our reading for today, everybody. And we've got some really cool stuff to talk about. So today we read 34, 35, and 36. And there's an unfortunate grouping, in my opinion, from, from today's reading. But let's talk about 34 real quick. Seem to be basically a, a, another similar judgment against a lot of nations, but specifically against the uh, the, the the nation of Edom. Um, Thirty five was clearly messianic, in my opinion. What do we talk about? Salvation and hope. Verse four said, "Behold, your God will come with vengeance. With the recompense of God, He will come and save you." So. This is just another Old Testament passage that calls Jesus God, which is awesome. So it's a really good reference point. Um, but then it goes on. It says, the eyes of the blind, the ears of the deaf, the lame man will leap like deer. The mute will be singing for joy. We've been reading the book of Mark. Haven't we seen all of those things taking place by the hand of Jesus? Then it talks about the way of holiness. Now, I couldn't find another reference to that, those, that specific phrase, but Jesus did say, I am the way, 
and he calls us to holiness. So it's very clear that it's talking about Jesus, that he is the way of holiness and that we're following him. And then, of course, it wraps it up and talking about everlasting joy, the promise of eternity without sorrow or sighing. And that is an amazingly cool messianic prophecy about the future and our hope. 36. Now let's talk about 36. Now, 36 through 39 really should be grouped together. Uh, It's actually more of a first person recollection by Isaiah because we're going to find out that Isaiah actually makes an appearance in his own prophecy for the first time rather than the, the kind of third person perspective he's been writing thus far. 36 only, which is what we read today, leaves us with a bit of a cliffhanger and you kind of feel like, oh no, this is crazy. How can God send Assyria to do all these bad things? Or look at how arrogant and how horrible they are. Well, just wait. You got to tune in tomorrow and we'll read, uh, read some more. And we're going to find out exactly what happens with King Hezekiah and what he does uh, when he calls on the name of the Lord. So have faith. God bless. We'll see you tomorrow.